Jesus is watching you. He's watching very close. He sees you. He knows you. He even knows you by name. Therefore, He has given you that name. You know, that's one of the things that we tell children more as a parental device than an actual statement. Jesus is watching you and all of a sudden Jesus turns into Santa Claus. You better behave because Jesus is watching. But what's interesting is that for the Christian, for the true Orthodox Christian, the one who believes that Christ is for us and not against us, it's not as important for Christ to see us as it is for us to see Christ. And I'll explain. There's not a time that Christ doesn't see us or know us. In fact, when we look at all three texts, and I hope that you go home with your bulletin and read all three texts again, there's one theme that continues through all of them, and it's seeing is believing. It's all about sight in these texts. First, of course, we have Saul, Saul, who is persecuting the church. Now, of course, Christ could see him because he appeared to him on the road to Damascus. Paul, not Saul at this point, just not knowing him, wanted to know who he was. And Christ, when Christ asked him, why are you persecuting me? And Saul, and, 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 I, and I just assumed this, Saul in his mind think, thinking, I don't persecute anyone but Christians. Who have I persecuted outside of Christians? And then Christ says, the people in which you are persecuting is me. They are my body. Why are you persecuting me? And then we have to turn and we ask, have to ask ourselves that are our, are our eyes truly open to see the damage that we do to Christ's body? Do we actually see Christ in each other? Because if we actually saw Christ in each other, you would dare not harm one another the way that you do. If you understood that in every baptized Christian, Christ resides, you would not say evil words amongst yourselves. If we understood Christ inside of our neighbor, you would approach your neighbor with love and kindness, understanding and knowing that people are going through things that you don't know about. And I've said this a while back, a few, a few sermons ago, if not last time. You don't know what people are going through. You don't know the, heart, the hurt that people are feeling or the happiness that people are feeling or the battles that people deal with every single day day that are unearthed every day for all that we know is what we see on the outside we see the facade and not the heart Christ is the heart Christ is the heart and so I ask of you do you see Christ in your neighbor? If so, I would ask this, speak no ill of them. Let no tongue speak ill 
of one another, especially here at Augustana, because I want to remind us that we are a family. We're an ever-growing family. We are a family that loves one another, but who treats each other poorly. Stop it. For the sake of God, inside your neighbor, stop it. See the heart and not the flesh. Christ Jesus, in all of our texts, see, say, see this, or I should say, speak this, that the eyes of all who believe in Him are casted upon Him. First we have Saul, like I said, who is persecuting Christ, and whom you have persecuted Christ, whom I have persecuted Christ by His body, even without knowing it, in thought, word, and deed, in saying gossip, well, it's not really gossip if it's true. Well, that's not true because true gossip has a little bit of truth in it, doesn't it? If not all of it. The truth can be and is gossip. That's just the fact of the matter. Just because it's true doesn't mean you should talk about it. Doesn't mean that you should further say words against your neighbor so we're back at the road with Saul. And he is persecuting Christ. And Christ says to him, or I should, I should say, Paul continues down the road to Damascus, or down the road of Damascus. And all of a sudden, his vision is impaired. All right, see, we have, we have that sight again. His vision is impaired for how many days? Three. Come on. Right? And it was Christ who did it. Christ blinded him for three days. As if he himself were in the tomb. And then, three days later, the scales fall. In. By the way, this is a bad translation. It's not something like scales. It is scales. Fall from his eyes and he can see. So what's happened? He has died the death of Christ. He has been in the tomb for three days, unable to see in the, in the dark tomb. And then three days later, the tomb or the scales fall from his eyes and he's resurrected. And no longer is he Saul, but he is Paul. That's what happens in baptism. You are drowned and you die and you rise again. And with water in your eyes, you are unable to see until slowly it drips from your eyes and the Holy Spirit into your soul. Then, in our Revelation text, we have what will come. First of all, the Revelation of St. John means to reveal to look at the truth. That's what it means, to look at the truth. And what does he see? He sees a lion. And he sees a lamb. And that lamb of God, he hears the myriads and myriads and thousands and thousands of many angels and the entire throng of heaven, which means the ones who have gone before you those who are being buried today. <clears throat> those who will be buried tomorrow. And those who have been buried in the past. All of them shall say and sing this. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. To receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And here's the thing. Every single one of those things He has given to you when He gives you heaven. Because heaven is nothing else but being with Christ. Nothing else but being with Christ. So everything, when you are in Christ, everything that can be said about Christ can be said about you. And so what do you see? 
the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And then, of course, Simon Peter, who must have been from Catawba County because he wanted to go fishing. And his friends were like, we want to go too. Again, apparently Paul was a good old, or Peter was a, was a good old boy. And so they go fishing. Now remember, at one point they were hiding. And then the risen Christ appeared to them. And they were afraid and they were, they were locked in the room. And then Christ appeared to them and said, peace be with you. Fear not. And so what do they do? They, will go, they go fishing. Oh, out in the open. In other words, they believe Christ's words. Peace be with you. Okay, peace is with us. Let's do what we do. Let's go about our jobs. Let's go about loving one another. Speaking the name of Christ. And then I think it's pretty awesome here where they finally see Christ on the shore. And then Peter, the one who betrayed him and was forgiven, can't even wait for 100 feet, 100 yards. He just dives into the water and is running after Christ. And the other ones are like, they just paddle in. And there, Christ has prepared for them a meal for the fish that were caught. And in that meal, with Christ, the disciples eat. I'll read this section of our gospel. So Simon Peter went to board, which is, again, ironic because he just he had just jumped out of the boat and ran to the shore and then goes back into the boat to get the 153 fish. So he goes back and comes back and Jesus says to them, come have breakfast. Now the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Or dared, they, now none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? For they knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. Now this was the third time Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. I want you to understand, those three days in the tomb meant this and this alone. And I speak to, to those particularly who are suffering today and those who are attending funeral today, those who are hurting, those who have attended funerals and those who struggle every day with unseen and seen illness, seen and unseen hurt and pain, seen and unseen sin, I say this, it's not of importance that you know that Christ sees you. He does. It's important that He allows you to see Him. And on that day, when you were baptized into Christ, your name was written in the Lamb's book of life, not with ink, but by the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that worthy Lamb. And upon that writing in the book, we are able to see Christ. So see Christ in your neighbor. And when you see Christ in your neighbor, do not, dear Peters, return to Saul's, but speak well of them. Lift them up. Love them. And also with those same eyes, see the flesh of the Son of the living God. Eat and drink, for worthy is the Lamb. Do not deny coming to where the Lamb is, where He is slain. Do not deny, but come to church. Come to receive Christ's body and blood. 
<clears throat> For if you desire to see Christ, truly to see Christ, you see Him there. This is my body. This is my blood given and shed for you. For the remission of your sins. Look and see the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Christ is risen. He is risen in me. Amen.